Right, so finally, we look at plant responses, and we said these were in two parts. The extracellular signaling molecules, plant hormones such as auxin, and the other one was inside the cell, intracellular um, signaling molecules called phytochromes. Okay, so um, just a quick reminder about how each of those works, and you know. Remember that this is just part of that larger story of responses overall. Okay, so you've got animal responses, and they have the nervous system and an endocrine system and all that, and that's, you know, central nervous system and all that's on that side. But plants can also make responses. So quickly, very quickly, with the auxin, Remember, there's that, those series of experiments. I would advise you that that gives you a good understanding to go through those uh, experiments that demonstrated how auxins work. Um, so auxin, so it's a growing shoot. If you've got light, then auxin is kind of preferentially accumulating on the shady side or the dark side of that growing shoot or the darker side of the growing shoot and auxin has its effects and what it does is it causes cell elongation so it's not causing cells to undergo any extra mitosis or any anything like that but the, it, the cells that there that there are they are undergoing an elongation and we'll touch on that process in a bit but they're undergoing elongation so cells on, on the side where the auxin is accumulating, they are elongating, and because the cells on this side are eventually going to become longer than the cells on this side, then the shoot starts to bend towards the light. Okay, as that side gets longer, um, it bends towards the light, and obviously that increases the light intensity that the plant experiences on its leaves therefore gives it uh, more productivity, allows it to undergo more growth, better chance of survival, and so on. Okay, so response that increases its chance of survival and passing on its alleles to subsequent um, generations and offspring. Okay, so that is essentially what auxin is doing. Uh, just a quick reminder of how it works. So you've got a plant cell, and it's surrounded by the cellulose of the cell wall, which essentially keeps the plant cell in this shape. What auxin does, so auxin, it is a molecule, um, so let's just call it A, and the cell wall is permeable, uh, remember, to water and other small molecules, and so auxin gets through the cell wall, binds to proteins on the cell membrane, and as all signaling molecules do, they induce some change in the behavior of the cell, most likely by initiating a set of kind of protein interactions. We don't need to go into that, okay? But the cell responds, when, when, when the cell membrane detects auxin, then the cell responds by increasing the activity of proton pumps, okay? Now, that means that um, the cell starts to uh, pump out more protons into the cell wall, which surrounds it. And the protons activate proteins that are extracellular and kind of just sitting around, called expansins. Okay, and when these expansins are active, what they do is they break the cross-links that are holding the cellulose microfibrils together. So whatever's holding the cellulose molecules together, these crosslinks, the expansins are actually breaking them down, allowing the cellulose molecules to kind of slide against each other a little bit. That on its own is not enough. <coughs> okay, so remember what the function of the cell wall is to 
provide that additional pressure back on the cell to stop the water, stop too much water coming into the cell and causing the cell to burst. Okay, but what happens now is because the cell wall, uh, because those fibers, though the molecules, the cell wall can slightly slide against each other, it's made the cell wall a little bit kind of malleable, a bit stretchable. So when a little bit of water comes into the cell, then the cell can actually elongate a little bit extra because the cell wall is not as rigid as it used to be before the action of the expansives. So water comes in and because the cell wall is now a little bit stretchable now because the expansives have broken the uh, cross links between the molecules, the cell can elongate slightly as the water comes in. Okay, and when that process uh, stops, then the, the bonds between the molecules of the cell wall can reform at a slightly different place um, and become the new uh, cell, new kind of fixed cell wall. But now this cell is a little bit more elongated than it used to be. Remember, these effects are all happening here on this side where there's more auxin, where there's less auxin because of the light. This is not happening, and so the cells here are getting longer. The cells here are staying pretty much as they are, and so the shoot overall bends towards the light. Let's move over to phytochromes now. Phytochromes are intracellular uh, proteins. So we've got a cell here, okay? And what the, so we've got the nucleus also, okay? Here, pause. <coughs> uh, the cell wall, I guess. Okay, a plant cell. And the idea is that, as well as auxins, phytochromes allow um, gene expression changes to happen in the plant cell in response to external conditions. Um, and what this is, is essentially a protein that is attached to a non-protein component that gives it the ability to be sensitive to light, okay? And the phytochromes can exist in two forms based on the amount of, or based on the wavelength of light that is being uh, absorbed. So we've got the PR form and we've got the PFR. PR and PFR. PR absorbs light of a more red wavelength and becomes PFR. Whereas PFR absorbs light of the far red wavelength, so I imagine that to be kind of more dark red. And when it does so, it becomes more PR. Gene expression is a very important idea that if you switch certain genes on or off, you then uh, pro, uh, allow the cell to produce new proteins that allow the cell to behave in a different way, okay? So the idea being that um, <clears throat> the PFR and PR activate different genes. So when you get, if you have, let's say, three genes in the plant, in this nucleus, the PR form results in the activations of gene A and gene C, whereas the PFR activates the expression of gene B. Okay? Now, why would you need to do that? Well, the thing is that plants, many plants behave differently in the summer compared to the winter or, you know, some other seasonal change. Um, and how do they do that? They must be altering gene expression so that they're making sure that plant cells are expressing certain genes in the summer that enable them to take advantage of the conditions of the summer. And when the conditions of the summer have gone, we must switch off those genes, switch certain other genes on that allow survival through the winter. Okay, so I hope that makes sense at this point. Um, transcription factors, or what's happening in here is the whole story of activation of certain transcription factors, specific transcription factors that bind to the um, uh, promoter regions of 
the genes. And when they do that, they form the transcription initiation complex with the RNA polymerase. And once the transcription initiation complex has been formed, transcription of the gene occurs, producing the mRNA that will go into the cytoplasm, be translated uh, to produce protein. And the proteins are going to then um, make the necessary changes to, this, to the functioning of the cell to allow the overall changes to the behavior of the organism, right? But let's come back to this, what's going on here? So I hope that we're okay with PR uh, essentially acting to activate a certain set of genes, PFR essentially acting to activate a different set of genes. But what causes them to be in these different forms? So <clears throat> red light is what red light is what you find during the day. So in the day you get red light, um, but in the night time you get far red light. Okay, so far red light, there's, a, there's, a, there's more far red light during the night and during the day there's more red light. Okay, and the thing is that overall there's kind of like a balance between how much PR there is and how much PFR there is. And when in the, in the summer, in the summer, the days are longer. So generally on a random uh, day in the summer, you will find more PFR because the PR has absorbed more red light and therefore most of the phytochrome is in the PFR form. And so the, the, the genes that are needed for all the summer activities, such as flowering um, and so on, uh, are being active in the summertime. Come to the same plant during the winter time. Now in the winter, the nights are longer, the days are shorter, there's more far red uh, light available during the winter times. And so you might find that in that plant, um, the, P, the phytochrome is spending most of its time in the PR form and therefore activating the genes that are needed for the plant to survive during the winter. Okay? And that is that. I know I've covered a lot of stuff, but if you've got any questions, that's good. No question is too dumb. Um, do ask, attempt to get these things resolved. You've got time. Um, and yeah, I hope that this video has put things in context a little bit better and so you feel a bit nicer about topic 8. Anything individually that you don't understand is good. Identify those things, answer the questions and move forward. Alright guys.